So let's dive into the Patreon listener question mailbag once again. If you want to be part of the Transformer Swag podcast, Patreon, help support the podcast, let us know we're doing a half-decent job here in the Transformer world, come join us on the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash protoman, or check the pinned comment or the description below if you need to find the link. What does it get you if you join the Patreon? Well, it gets you your name in the end credit scroll at the end of every segment moving forward. Access to our awesome Discord where we share the news, break the news, share images, lore, all kinds of stuff. And of course, sales. Gotta have those sales. Gotta save money in the Transformer world with inflation just around the corner. And of course... Depending on what tier, you might get a little gift in the mail or access to the Patreon listener question. We have a Patreon listener question here from Springus Prime. And Springus Prime wants to know, what GoBots do you think we could see in the future for Transformers? In recent years, we got Road Ranger and Bug Bite. Could, could we see others added to the list? And who would you like to see? Springus Prime. Well, thank you for the question. And being a patron, Springus Prime. Um, well, let, let's tackle the first part. Uh, who do you think we could possibly see in the future? Who knows? Who knows, really? It used to be back in the day, because I, we talked about this with Aaron Archer when he was working on the, the Transformers Armada brand, which was in 1994 when Hasbro acquired both pretty much everything with Kenner and Tonka. They got the GoBots license pretty much the trademarks all of that stuff came with it but as time progressed a lot of those trademarks expired because hasbro just didn't put out product to foster it now they kept the gobot trademark itself alive through various forms whether it be a g2 character sublines other sublines they always found some place for that gobots trademark to keep it alive but they never really did anything with some of those other ones when Aaron Archer was working on Transformers Armada, you know, he did the little tongue in cheek thing where he's like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if like Megatron's Minicon, that's his slave, was called Weeder One? And he brought it to Hasbro's trademarking and copyright guys. And they're like, yeah, sure, we could do that. And he was like, wow, OK. And, you know, he tried to do it again with Gobatron for Dead End. But ultimately, in the end, they just went with Dead End because they needed to keep that trademark alive. And that's, you know, Dead End is an actual Transformer character, a Stunticon. And it's better to keep that one alive than do a tongue-in-cheek GoBot thing. And yeah, hey, that's the little mini-con that comes with Unicron and stuff like that. You know, again, it would have been fun if they called it that. You know, called it GoBatron. Little black and yellow planet that's now a husk of its, you know, former self killed by unicron that would have been cool but it is what it is sometimes like i said the trademarking business takes precedent over characters and and fun little things like that and you know we really wouldn't see that again for a while you know we really really wouldn't it's it's just something that hasbro had no real interest in celebrating what was once a rival brand back in the 80s and the only time they would ever really come up you know, especially during those early 2000s, was to make fun of them, whether it be in comic books or, you know, oh, here's, here's, you know, Leader One or here's Cycle getting killed, you know, as a background character or something. It wasn't until 2004 did eHobby wanted to kind of do an homage to GoBots through their, like, repaints, which, again, eHobby, which was working with Takara at the time, and they had all these reissues of G1 toys. They're like, hey, what are we going to do with all these mini-bot molds? You know, we already did the reissues of them. Maybe we could do some repaints out of them. And so they did their G1 GoBots, you know, subline, little mini-bot bot, box set. And while initially they were named after GoBot characters, which was uh, Bug Bite, Pathfinder was in there, Road Ranger, Smallfoot, uh, Bad Boy, and treads i think was the last one yeah because it was the warpath mold um they didn't even have gobot color schemes they weren't really like straight up homages to those gobot characters they were named after they were just like they, a lot of those colors were based off of prototype colors test shot colors you know weird little colors that a lot of those characters have i mean real talk the actual gobots bug bite is a yellow beetle so you know <laughs> it would have been rather confusing uh, if uh, we have a yellow bumblebee, because it's bumblebee. 
But that's a whole other story. The point is, is that the, none of them really had those colors that matched them. And in the end, they didn't even use those names for those characters. I think Takara got cold feet because they, you know, they're right over there with Bandai and who knows what was going on behind the scenes. But in the end, we still associate those names with those molds of those characters and those color schemes for B-Hobby because of what initially was planned. And we didn't really start seeing the the GoBot kind of nods until we entered our like our golden era of classics and and going into the movie verse when Transformers was making a lot of money and then it went from wow, you know, we're not going to celebrate our rival even though we own you know, at least the trademarks, but most of them not anymore. Uh, to the point where it's like, man, we need to put out product now because Transformers is selling like hotcakes. And that's when we had like the Walmart exclusive repaints and stuff where we had in 2008, they took the classics Mirage mold and turned that into Fracture, which was an homage to Crasher, the female GoBot, well, Le Mans in this case, but they used a Formula One mold. Close enough, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> And uh, that was pretty cool. I really love that mold, and I love that they did uh, Crasher out of that, which was fantastic. And then, of course, in you know, in two thousand eight and two thousand nine, with Revenge of the Fallen stuff, uh, we had the um, the best one of them all, in my opinion, because when we got uh, Dirt Boss from the Scout class, which was a forklift, and that was part of the Scout class Revenge of the Fallen two thousand nine stuff. I was looking at that thing going, it's just a matter of time before someone repaints that thing orange and we're going to get GoBot spoons out of it. And we did. We did get GoBot spoons out of it ultimately in the end, primarily because I think it was Joe Kide that did the repaints on those. But like Joe Kide had this thing where I guess, you know, he would do the repaint and just to really solidify that it's an homage to a GoBot, he would always find a way to put the MR stamp somewhere on the figure along with their number for people that aren't aware uh, all GoBot toys, the original GoBot toys, had an MR stamp somewhere on it, along with their number, which was an MR number based off of Machine Robo. So in the case of if you have an original Spoons toy, somewhere on it, it says MR34. So it's kind of the same thing where they, they made sure that when they repainted uh, Deadlift here, they made sure the MR34 was written on it. There was another one, too, that ended up not coming out. It was... Uh, they took the Cybertron lug nuts mold and they repainted it into a scout class backtrack from the 2007 movie stuff. It got a limited release in South America and stuff. And that also had like an MR 37 on it. And that one was also again, throwback to night Ranger, one of the old GoBot toys, pretty cool stuff. Again, it, 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 it once in a while bubbles up. There's always some kind of designer in Hasbro that goes, Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we just did this little GoBot throwback? And I think the last real like major example of that in that, I guess we'll call it the mid 2000 era was uh, Transformers Prime Beast Hunters, where the character of Ripclaw was an homage to Vamp. And they even had the sculpted face of Vamp uh, from GoBots and stuff. And they, I, I wish they did it in the full colors though. Cause obviously all that red on Vamp kind of like throws it off, but still pretty cool that, uh, that happened. I think that was also Joe Kide. I think Joe Kide was the big GoBots guy. Shout out to Joe Kide and uh, his his glorious taste in Transformers and, and transforming robots from both Bandai, Poppy, and Hasbro and Takara. Uh, and then, of course, like uh, like Springus mentions, you know, in, in the modern era, you know, we got Bug Bite from Bacon at first, and that character was established to be part of the original GoBots, you know, dimension hopping and stuff like that and that we had that white color scheme once again associated with the bug bite character and that was that and then when we jump to today we have the bug bite generation selects so it's like yeah we have now we could have that that GoBots character again celebrated and then of course in recent months we had the war for cybertron kingdom golden disc collection with the autobot road ranger which in his fiction and in his copyright stuff and in the listing to order online uh was mentioned to be uh, a gobot and that he was dimension hopping and stuff or time vortex hopping in this case so also establishing that he is the original gobot character not just a cybertronian that has a gobot name like something like fracture let's say or some of the others that just happen to have those color schemes and their homages or deadlift 
So yeah, there's been attempts and it shows that it could happen at any time, at any point, at anywhere. Uh, who would be next? I have no idea. It's, it's something where a lot of those trademarks unfortunately don't exist anymore, so we can't really predict it based on trademarks. Hasbro keeps the trademarks alive in terms of like, you know, maybe like, again, cases like Road Ranger today and Bug Bite and, of course, the GoBot name itself, but not so much really anything else that we could really note. Even Leader One isn't one that's currently trademarked under Hasbro, oddly enough. And we do know that, I mean, there was this long debate for years, does Hasbro own the rights to the designs? Because there's this thing where there's the Action Toys GoBots line that uses those original Machine Robo and Bandai designs or Poppy designs. And, you know, does, does Hasbro own the rights to those? And it's always been a heated debate that we don't really know because when we had the Tom Sicoli GoBots comic book, trademarks, GoBots comic book and everything, if you look at all the licensing written inside that book, everything pertains to being owned by Hasbro. And those books, one for one, show the toy designs of those old Machine Robo GoBot molds. So it's kind of sketchy on what Hasbro really owns. I think at the end of the day, they really just kind of own some of those names if they do have them, like GoBots. But at the end of the day, when it comes to comic books and stuff like that, they could be kind of fast and loose with the licensing and trademarks to a degree. Much like how you could have a jet fire that looks like a Mac Ross character in the comics, you just can't really make the toy look like that, at least for the longest time. So the second part of your question is, who would I like to see? Since we can't really predict who will get next, who would I like to see then? Well, my always my obvious answer is one of my favorite GoBot characters, and I've probably said it many times in the past, is Vanguard. I love Vanguard. He was It was a childhood favorite of mine. Growing up, I had just as many GoBot toys as I did Transformer toys. Although, looking back now, I think some of my childhood GoBot toys might have been bootlegs because there was a, like a lot of the bootlegs of GoBots were very close to how the original toys were. Sometimes they were, they were just a different shade of color. Like Dive Dive was a slightly darker you know, like blue or something to his gray. So I think a lot of the GoBots I had growing up might have been bootlegs, but just really good bootlegs, like the Robo Machine or or some of those other ones there. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I love Vanguard. Vanguard was one of my favorites growing up. And when we did GoBot exclusives at TFCon, I made sure Vanguard was going to be one of the exclusives, a, a, a selfish choice, I must say, by me. But I really wanted to make it happen. And we took that, uh, God, what was the company that we used at the time? It was one of these companies at the time that was using... Let me just move my head here a second. I can't even see the box. It was one of the third-party companies. I'm so bad with third-party names. But it was one of the third-party companies that was doing uh, mini-bots at the time. And so we took the Braun mold and we turned it into Vanguard. And I, and I felt the Braun mold worked well because the original Vanguard had... it was ori The original Vanguard toy from GoBots was an original mold made by... Ha uh, by Hasbro, by uh, Tonka, along with Bandai, to be original stuff for the MRT line, which were Tonka exclusive GoBots for the North American region. And that one specifically had like this like V on the chest, uh, no, V on the hood of this the van. And the V kind of looked like an M, like the, 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 I guess like an M, you know how you have like the V part in the center of the, the letter M. Uh, it kind of looked like an M and it kind of reminded me of the M on the hood of Braun, because Braun has an M on his hood because Microman and what he came from in his history. So we kind of like did a Vanguard colored Braun. Uh, repro Labels did this fantastic uh, repro label sheet so that you could really make it look like a GoBots character of Vanguard, which was absolutely cool of Aaron Black and the crew to do that. Um, it was, it was, it came out really well. And then I did a comic book with Alex Milne you know, explaining the history of Vanguard and we called him Vanguardian because again, trademarks and uh, that's a whole other story. So uh, I just would love to see Vanguard. Uh, if it's a new Braun mold, if we get a new Braun deluxe mold or alternatively, heck, we got that legacy skids mold that's out right now. I'm pretty sure if you retool it, give it a brand new head sculpt, something could be done there. And then the other ones that, you know, I'd like to see, I'd love to see Pathfinder just done proper. I mean, yeah, we'll take a Cosmos mold and turn into Pathfinder, but I don't want to see those e-hobby, you know, GoBots colors on it because those the the 
Pathfinder colors that we see from the e-hobby set are not Pathfinder's colors of those dark grays and stuff like that. I'd like to see the actual GoBots Pathfinder colors put on the Cosmos mold, give it a brand new head sculpt so it matches that female Pathfinder character. It would be fantastic. That'd be really, really cool. And then simple ones even, like take a Conehead, Seeker Jet, Ramjet, and turn him into Phytor colors. Yeah, sure, he'd probably look like Thrust at the end of the day, but I'm pretty sure you could put some yellows and grays in there and mix it up a little bit and uh, make it look like Phytor, a.k.a. Blue Jet from Machine Robo. And uh, that'd be awesome, too. I mean, those are just three. I could think of so many more, but GoBots is much much like Shattered Glass. GoBots is something that's inherently perfect for, for Transformers for repaints. And, I mean, when we learned about Road Ranger from the Golden Disc Collection, I was super excited because it shows that there's still life in that and not just the simple bug bite repaint from Bumblebee that we're always going to expect. And, I mean, we got to see even bug bite appear both in the War for Cybertron Netflix series and recently in the Cyberverse line. Now, granted, both of those animated versions are not confirmed to be the GoBot characters. They're just mercenary characters. But, I mean, it does show that there is interest in at least kind of homaging those characters and even letting them be on-screen characters if need be. Uh, they just need to be very... I guess in the case of, like, Bug Bite, because he's different from his original toy in terms of colors, and Road Ranger, again, very different from the original toy, they have a better chance where if we did something like Vanguard, or maybe not Vanguard, because, again, that's based, that's not based off of a Bandai mold. That's an original one. Um, but something like, let's say, Pathfinder, if we took cosmos gave it the pathfinder colors and the pathfinder head sculpt would bandai come knocking and go hey what are you guys doing you know like if especially if it's featured in animation and stuff like that it's hard to say it's hard to say that that bridge has never been crossed yet that's the thing like the closest we really got to those color schemes like in, in my opinion is stuff like let's say fracture and the crasher and even then not a not a show character not an on-screen character doesn't 100% match the mold or the head sculpt or the face of those original versions because if you look at what the original Crasher GoBots toy was, uh, looks very different from the animation model of the GoBot show, which was very, I guess, feminine face, which had the pink on it and stuff. So it's it's hard to say. It, we haven't ever had to test those waters and find out for sure what legally could be done. But at the end of the day, we do know that Hasbro has that GoBots name and they're going to constantly be using it in the future to keep owning it. So who knows what will happen? Again, the last time that they used it to refresh the trademark was the Tom Sicoli comic. I'm pretty sure we'll probably get another toy in the future and we'll get another GoBot. Who it'll be, I don't know. Those are the three I'd like to see. Who would you like to see of the GoBots? I'm pretty sure there's a GoBot that every kid grew up with, some cheap little GoBot they got, whether it be Waterwalk, whether it be, I don't know, Scooter or, or Turbo or even some of the weirder ones. You know, who's a weirder one? Uh, you know, Slicks. I like Slicks, actually. Slicks is pretty cool. Uh, I'm just turning. I'm looking at my collection right now. But, yeah, it's, I, I love GoBots. I've always had a, a special place in my heart for them. And I kind of hope we, we see more of them because those are fresh characters that you could do repaints into and have some fun with it if you just put a new head sculpt on it. So, I hope that answers your question, Springus, and I hope uh, I hope that uh, we do get some GoBots in the future. And if you want to be like Springus and be part of the Transformer Slag Patreon and help support the podcast, again, patreon.com forward slash protoman or check the pinned comment or the description below and rock out with the, instead of robots in the skies, mighty robots, mighty vehicles.